Welcome to episode two of my Road to Pro series, where I'm gonna be documenting my entire journey to the natural bodybuilding stage where I plan to compete in 2021. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be giving you guys insights into my training, my nutrition, and basically plan updates and posing updates as I progress. Um, I also did a video, I'll link it up in the, the cards above and I'll also put it down in the description. Um, it was basically my full detailed plan. I did that for the first video of the series. So you wanna make sure that you definitely check that out and also make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you really don't miss a thing. All right, so I just woke up about 20 minutes ago, and the first thing I always do as soon as I wake up is I weigh myself. And this morning I had an extremely low weigh-in. I weighed in at 197.8, uh, even despite bumping up my calories. Uh, and yesterday I was sick, I was at 200, maybe 200.8, something like that. Um, so like I said, that's an extremely low weigh-in. So just to give you an overview of what you can expect for today, I'm gonna be taking you guys through a full day of eating to show you exactly what I eat. I'm also gonna be uh, hitting you guys with a posing update as well, so you can see uh, and assess my progress and just kind of give the see what I'm looking like basically. I'm also going to be giving you guys um, a plan update just to show you kind of how I track my progress and how I stay consistent. And then finally, I'm also going to be hitting you guys with a pull workout. It's going to be a bicep focused pull workout. It's going to be a little bit later this evening uh, just because I like the gym to be a little bit cleared so I'm able to film the content. So that's just a little bit overview of the day. But before I get breakfast started, the first thing I always do is I either make a coffee or go grab one because it's an absolute must in the morning. Uh, so today I'm actually going to be going to grab one. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go pick up one and then let's get this day started. Can I get an extra large black coffee, please? Extra large black? Yeah, that's everything. You can tell us I'm $2.15 up for stretch your window. Thank you. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, so I just got back from grabbing my coffee. As you've seen, it's black coffee. Um, I drink black coffee uh, because I do really enjoy the taste of it, and I also don't want the extra calories that come from uh, the extra milk and sugar. I'd rather kind of save that for uh, actually eating the food. Um, so that's just a personal preference of mine. Um, so if you don't really like black coffee, then you can definitely get milk and sugar in it, but that's just a preference. Um, and I do prefer McDonald's over Tim Hortons as well. Um, so like I said, coffee is a, is a huge morning routine for me. It kind of uh, allows me to kind of uh, increase my productivity. It gives me the energy needed in order to kind of uh, go on with my day. Um, so that's kind of why I got all these other things here. I want to show you what uh, else is involved in my morning routine. I think it's very important that uh, you develop a good, consistent morning routine. Uh, something that's able to, that you're able to stick to, that's able to consistent, um, that aligns to your goals. Um, so a couple things that I've got here. Um, I've actually got uh, fish oil pills. So these are just the mega mega three um, fatty acid fish oil pills. So I take uh, they say to take one. Sometimes I take two, depending on. Uh, sometimes I just take two, just because, really. But it says to take one. So normally what I do is I take one or two of these. Um, and as you can see, they're just they're pretty big, uh, but they're easy to get down. Um, so that's the fish oil pills that I take. And then these are the Kirkland. So I got these at Costco. Um, these are actually a multivitamin. Um, I think this is very important. So if you're looking to get into two different supplements uh, right off the bat, I think having a good uh, solid multivitamin along with the fish oil is an absolute must. Um, so those are my two uh, supplements that I normally take in the morning along with my coffee. And then in terms of water, um, water is absolutely huge and I think a lot of people don't really prioritize it as much as they should. Um, so with that being said, uh, that's another part of my morning routine is to make sure that as soon as I get up, um, after I go and grab my coffee, I make sure that I grab water or I fill up my bottle with water. Um, so normally what my goal is, is to drink anywhere from three to four liters of water a day. Um, I'd like to be on uh, the four liter side, uh, but it can definitely be tough some days. Um, so I kind of allow myself that varies between three liters to four liters. Um, and normally what I do is I, lately what I've been doing, I've been just doing this in the last couple weeks, um, but it's the uh, flavored water. I've actually been mixing a little bit of flavored water in with the water. Uh, just so it's easier to get down and it's not as uh, it's not as hard and it kind of tastes a little bit better um, because drinking uh, water, drinking that, that much water every single day can kind of get boring. Um, so I kind of spice it up, like I said, uh, with the flavored water. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of go over uh, the other parts of my morning routine. Um, and now I'm actually going to show you guys uh, what I have for breakfast. All right, so starting off with meal one, which I mentioned is breakfast for me. Um, so what I normally do is I normally do the protein source first. Um, so my protein source is actually going to be egg whites. Uh, and then I also combine that with uh, two eggs. Uh, the reason being is because eggs have a lot of fat and I kind of want to uh, save fat for later in the day. So by having a little bit more egg whites, 
uh, in with it, I'm able to up the protein without having the fat. Um, and, a, and a must is definitely a food scale, so if you don't have one of those, I highly encourage everybody to go pick one up. Um, you need it in order to really kind of track your calories to a T. Um, so that's what I uh, highly recommend, it's definitely a food scale. So I weigh up everything um, in terms of every one of my meals. That's just kind of the way I am. I want to make sure that my numbers are precise and that they're as accurate as they can be. So a food scale allows me to do that. Um, so yeah, like I said, I start off with eggs first. Um, so I basically just take a frying pan um, and I do coat a little bit of olive oil uh, on it. I don't really track it um, just because I just, yeah, I don't feel like it's that material even though like four calories per, it says, half a gram um, so I just kind of don't track it because I'm bulking but if I was cutting and I was trying to do, uh, be more concerned with, with, with my calories being in a deficit then I totally would probably track it um, so yeah I'm gonna just spray the pan and then I put my uh, pan on the food scale which is zero to and I start off with the egg white so I normally uh, probably 155 to 160 grams is what I normally weigh up. I'll put all the macros on the screen as well so you can see them. So that's 162 grams right there. And then I just crack two eggs. have this on a lower setting um, just because I find that this one gets fairly hot and it burns pretty quickly um, so that's just kind of what I do uh, there's nothing worse than having overcooked eggs in my opinion I'd rather them a little bit uh, lightly cooked I guess and I just move them around so yeah that's my, my uh, major protein source I find that it's kind of good to find something that you're able to uh, stick with that's consistent um, and honestly, I don't mind this. Um, I do put a little spice on it. So normally what I do for uh, spice and seasoning is I use a little bit of French Red Hot. Um, so there's that seasoning there. This is just the original, um, and this tastes awesome with anything. Um, so I kind of use that. I can change it up every now and then as well. Like I do like to change it up. I think that's important. Uh, but I think finding something that you're able to stick with that's consistent uh, is 100% important as well. So that's my main protein source in the morning is the eggs and the egg whites. Um, and I will put the uh, macros on the screen as well. And then going into my carb source uh, and my fat source uh, is gonna be oatmeal. So these are just the Quaker Quick Oats, the Quaker Quick Oats, um, as you can see here. Um, I got these ones at Costco just because they're a good deal, but you can pick these up at Walmart or any grocery store. Uh, so what I normally do here is I weigh up one cup. So instead of actually doing a cup, um, I wanna be a little bit more precise with it. So I actually use uh, it in grams. So it's uh, 90 grams for one cup. That's kind of what I weigh up. So 92 grams, that's fine. Then what I normally do is put a little bit of water in it uh, and throw it in the microwave. But I also put a little bit of peanut butter in and I weigh up the peanut butter. I think that's extremely important because it is very calorically dense and it can get out of control pretty quickly. Um, so I would highly recommend, instead of just guessing a tablespoon, uh, weigh it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of my, uh, water in this and throw it in the microwave. seconds in the microwave um, it's still kind of it's, that's the perfect texture that's just how I like them I don't like them really wet or really dry so I feel like that 45 seconds does a pretty good job in my microwave um, so like I mentioned I do weigh up the peanut butter so one tablespoon uh, is 15 grams so that's what I try to go for on the scale I'm trying to get as accurate as possible So there's 15 there. Then all I do is just mix that up. And as you can see, it's 
nice texture. Still a little runny, but still kind of dry as well. And then that peanut butter goes really well with the oats. Um, so I'm gonna eat this, and then I'm gonna finish cooking my eggs, and then uh, once the eggs are cooked, and once I finish that, um, I will check in with, with you for lunch. Uh, but like I said, everything will be, macros will be on the screen. Uh, and then this has been my breakfast pretty consistently, along with the water that I try to uh, intake as well, and also the coffee. Um, so this has been working for me for a while. Um, like I said, I think it's very important that you find something you can stick to. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be my breakfast. So this is meal one, and I'm gonna check in uh, with you again when I, uh, when I have lunch for meal two. spread it out um, so I have four and a half ounces uh, of chicken for lunch and four and a half ounces of chicken for dinner um, so it's a total of nine ounces a day I just like doing that better um, I just find out it separates my meals a little bit more um, so as I mentioned that's going to be my major protein source uh, so normally what I'm going to do is I'll show, I'll show you how I'm going to do it with the uh, carb source once I get into that um, so I'm going to set the oven I'm actually going to put it in the oven um, so I'm going to set the oven for about four four fifteen I would say This is just a small pack of chicken. I normally buy it bigger, uh, but I just happened to be at the store and it was just kind of convenient to buy this. Um, so what I normally do is I normally cut the chicken up pretty small, just so it cooks better and I want to show you what I'm going to do with it uh, after it's cooked. So I just like cubes is kind of what I go for when I'm cutting it up. And like I said, I'm not... <laughs> By no means am I a chef, I just kind of, uh, I do the best that I can in terms of uh, foods, but I just kind of keep it pretty basic. Because uh, like I said, that works for me, so I think it's just about finding um, a balance that works for you and just sticking with it. Um, I don't mind eating this, I do enjoy it, um, and I think that's important. Um, so definitely find foods that you enjoy. Um, I mean, I do incorporate fish and meats into my diet as well, uh, but for the most part, I do stick with chicken because I know how my body responds to it the best. Uh, I feel like it responds the best to it, so I just keep it, like I said, I keep it simple. So I will get into the spices that I have. Um, you can probably guess that I'm gonna be using the French Red Hot just by the video, because um, that's kind of been the, uh, the staple lately, has been the French Red Hot. Um, I just really like them. I think that they add a lot of flavor to your chicken. Um, a lot of people use a bunch of different hot sauces and stuff. I'm not really, I don't really use a lot of, in the off season. Um, maybe during like a, a prep or a, uh, a cut or something I would, just because it's uh, very low in calories and very, actually has no calories in it. Um, so I would probably transition that more when I, when I start cutting um, and save that kind of stuff for then so I don't get sick of it. Uh, but I do like hot sauce, that's for sure. chicken is almost cut. If I was a little bit more in a time constraint then I would I would do a little bit more meal prepping. Uh, normally I do I make chicken in bulk so normally I will make more than this and just put it in the fridge. Uh, but today just happened to be the, be the day that I ran out 
Um, but I do have rice in the fridge, so when I get into that, that's actually going to be my, my major carb source. Uh, for lunch and dinner, it's going to be uh, jasmine rice. I do have some of that in the fridge, so hopefully there's enough there for both meals. Um, but like I said, I'm going to cook the chicken first, and then I'll get into how I prepare it, which is, like I said, very basic. Uh, but to me, it tastes good, so I guess that's all that matters. Yeah, I just find that it cooks better when it's cute. Plus, it kind of goes down a little bit easier. Um, I find that sometimes it's hard to kind of get the calories in and eat the same stuff over and over. Like I said, can be repetitive. Um, so I just find changing up the texture and changing the shape of things it just makes it a little bit more appealing. Um, and then in terms of the spices, like I mentioned, uh, I'm going to be using the Frank's Red Hot. So this is the Buffalo Ranch, like I mentioned, and then this is just the original um, staples right now in, in my diet, just to kind of. Like I said, make the chicken a little more flavorful. So I'm just going to sprinkle some of that on. And then this is the only other thing that I'm adding in is just the uh, smoked apple wood. Honestly, it's just a random spice that's up in the cupboard. I do like the taste of it though. Um, my girlfriend uh, uses it. So I just was using it uh, since she had it, but I definitely would buy more of this because I actually do like it. Um, I think it's meant more for meats and stuff like that, uh, but for some reason it tastes good on chicken. So yeah, that's basically, just so you can see here, that's basically the finished product. Nothing special, <laughs> uh, definitely gets the job done. And there's definitely probably, there's definitely enough for this meal, maybe the next, or not this meal, but maybe the next day as well. Um, so like I said, I will be weighing it out once it's cooked. That's another thing is that you definitely wanna be weighing your meat and your rice uh, out when you're when it's cooked, um, because it has a lot of uh, water in it, moisture. Uh, so once it's cooked, you're able to kind of get a more accurate measurement. So in terms of chicken and meats and stuff, I always weigh it after it's cooked. And same thing with rice. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stick this in the oven. Um, and then I'll check in with you when it's cooked and I'll show you kind of how I put the rice and the chicken together to kind of make it taste good. Since I'm just waiting for the chicken to cook, like I mentioned at the start of the video, I would be showing you uh, how I track my calories and kind of how I organize my plan. Um, so yeah, this is basically how I do it. So this is an Excel spreadsheet that I just keep on my computer. Uh, and all I basically do is I track it within the app and then I transfer it from the app over to uh, like a spreadsheet. Um, I made this one myself. So this is all the logs um, from the different weeks. And then I just have uh, phase one being the bulk and then I just organize it by the date. So here's the date on this side. Um, the calories, the protein, the carbs, the fats, uh, my morning weight, my water, my water, and my cardio, and then I just ba base it based on weeks. Um, so I basically assemble all this information, um, and then what I do is I go over to a summary, and I include, um, I just uh, summarize it, so I just divide it by seven, and basically kind of get a weekly average to kind of see where I'm going. And as you can see, um, I'm trending up, so 197, 198. 198.7, 198.9, 198.97. Um, so as you can see, it's my weight is slowly going up uh, over each week. And then I can kind of have a better idea of my average protein, carbs, and fats, um, and just basically my cardio or anything that I'm doing on top of that. Um, so this is a great way that uh, I kind of track my calories and it works for me. Um, and as you can see here, yesterday I was 204.4, uh, um, and then now I've dropped to 197.8. Um, so I think that's because I, I eat a little bit less calories, as you can see the difference between calories. Um, and yeah, also the summary kind of shows that a little bit better as well. Um, with this week, I actually went up uh, in weight um, on average, so I ate around 3,500 calories. Uh, so like I mentioned, I did kind of bump my calories up. I was eating around uh, 3,250 and then I bumped that up to 34 um, and I still wasn't putting on the weight that I wanted. Um, so because of that, I cut cardio. Um, and basically what I did was I added in uh, some more calories, so now I'm up to 3,500 calories uh, every day. Um, so I'm going to be doing that until I kind of uh, peak there or plateau there. And like I said, uh, uh, and like I said in the detailed video when I went over my plan, I do want to kind of get up to 205. 
um, and I will be doing a mini cut in April. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm able to get up to 205 uh, by April and just kind of uh, slowly put on a pound a week is kind of what my goal is. Um, so like I said, uh, this is kind of how I track it. Um, and then I basically just uh, import my data like I mentioned. So this works for me. So I highly encourage you guys to kind of uh, find a way to track your calories that works the best for you. And then this is uh, keeping me accountable as well. Um, yeah, so this is just a little update on my calories. So right now I'm currently eating 3,500 calories, um, and I'm just trying to be up. I'm trying to gain up to 205 pounds uh, before I begin my mini cut. All right, guys, just an update on the chicken. So that was 30 minutes. So I'm gonna take it out now. It should be cooked. Yeah, it looks pretty cooked, but I always like to make sure. So what I normally do is I just cut into the biggest piece, uh, but then you can kind of tell. This is going to be uh, my lunch, but it's going to be the exact same thing uh, for my dinner as well. So I will put the macros up for both of those so you can kind of have an idea and I'll do the running total. And then at the end of the video, I'll put the total macros for the day. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have a frying pan. Um, and I want to place that directly. Directly on my food scale. And I'm going to weigh up one cup of rice. Uh, like I mentioned before, um, I don't like using the measuring cup. I just find it's a lot less accurate. Um, so I like really weighing it up. So because of that, one cup of uh, jasmine rice is gonna be 158 grams. So that's what I'm gonna put on the, that's what I'm gonna put on here. So 162, that's close enough. In terms of, like I said, close enough, I basically, I track that as 162, I don't track that as 158. Um, so I think that that's a mistake that a lot of people make is they estimate things. Um, and I think it's okay to go a little bit over, but as long as you make sure you make the adjustments in your calorie tracking app. Yeah. So like I said, um, originally I was going for 158, but 162 is fine. And I'm just gonna update that in my uh, calorie tracking app. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be the rice there. I already turned on the, the stove. Um, And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh up my chicken. Um, I'm going to let that heat up a bit first because the chicken is already cooked and it's kind of warm so I don't want to overcook the chicken. So I'll let that heat up. So in terms of the chicken, like I mentioned, um, the jasmine rice is my main carb source and then the chicken is going to be uh, my main protein source. Like I said, four and a half grams. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to four and a half, or four and a half ounces, sorry. I'm going to switch my food scale to ounces. So four and a half. So four and a half, bang on. And then this is going to be leftovers. I'm actually going to put that, uh, I'm going to actually use some of that for dinner, like I mentioned. Um, and then I'll have the rest of it uh, tomorrow. So this is just heating up. And then I'm gonna put the chicken in with it when it's, once it heats up. And then in terms of my greens, which are just which are just are important, or they they are extremely important actually. Um, I use baby spinach, and I, like I said, I'm nothing fancy. I'm not by any means a chef or a cook or not, sometimes I don't put a lot of effort into it. Um, I just kind of, I'm more concerned about just getting the food in and getting the quality food in. Um, and like I said, going back to uh, just making it work for yourself, and this happens to work best for me uh, lately. So what I've been doing is I've just been eating the spinach, uh, just been like ham, i just been just like eating it straight out of the container. Um, instead of like making a salad or anything, I just find that I don't, I'm not able to stick to the salads. Um, so I find that buying the spinach and literally just eating it, um, it doesn't taste the best. I'm not a big fan of spinach, um, but I mean it's very, has a lot of uh, micronutrients in it that are very important. Um, so I definitely want to make sure that I have it in my diet. I normally alternate between this and kale. Um, I used to do like a kale 
spinach and zucchini salad um, and then I used to coat it with dressing and I just found that it was taking up a lot of my diet in terms of the dressing and a lot of fat just to get the, just to get the greens down. So what I did was I just decided to, like I said, just eat it out of the container. Um, so I'll be snacking on this um, between from, from lunch until dinner. So I probably, I want to say I definitely eat a couple cups of it. Um, so that's kind of what I do in terms of the greens. Um, yeah, so this rice is actually just heat, heating up right now. So I'm gonna actually turn that down a little bit. And then all I'm gonna do is put the chicken in with it. And then this is the secret weapon right here. This is sweet Thai chili sauce. Uh, I really love the VH products. I think they make a lot of great flavors and they're really great for stir fries or um, any type of uh, chicken or rice combo, I guess you would say. Um, so the calories on it are not too bad. Um, as you can see, it's two tablespoons. It's roughly around 60 calories. I'm trying to get it to focus. So yeah, it's not too bad. With this here, normally what I do is I do guess because I don't really got those uh, little tiny measuring spoons. Um, so what I do is if I pour, uh, if I pour one on here, I count it as two. So I'm actually going to do two tablespoons. Or actually, sorry, four tablespoons. So what I, like I said, I just kind of. So that I actually count that as two. And then that's four. And that's all that I use. So I just use four uh, tablespoons and then I just mix that around. I'm telling you, this sauce is awesome. If you haven't tried the sweet chili pie sauce, um, it's awesome. It makes the chicken rice taste amazing. Of course, you can get a little bit fancier and throw uh, veggies and different things in here to kind of spice it up a little bit. Uh, going back to what I said, I'm just basic when it comes to uh, some meals. Um, and this just does the job and I do enjoy the taste of it. And I'm, I'm able to stick with it as well. So this has just been my go-to for a little bit. Um, over the course of my diet and over the course of my, uh, I guess my bulk, it has changed. Like I used to do stir fries and I used to do a bunch of different things. Um, but like I said, everything kind of just gets old after a while and you change it up. So this is kind of what I'm into right now. Um, at the end of the day, it's calories that are important and just making sure you're prioritizing the right amount of calories and having a good macro breakdown. So like I said, I'm 3,500 calories. I try to get around 220 protein. Um, and then the fats and carbs just kind of, uh, sometimes I try to get around 90 grams of fat and then the carbs just kind of fall in place. Um, but yeah, my goal is to kind of keep protein high around 220 grams. So that's just going to be set on low now. That's pretty much done. So I'll show you the finished product. So there's the finished product there. Um, yeah, like I said, nothing special, just chicken and rice. Uh, but that sauce does a, 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 definitely makes a huge difference in terms of improving the taste. Um, so yeah, like I said, that's uh, four ounces, four and a half ounces of chicken and then 158, but actually, so a cup of 158 grams of rice. Like I said, I did go over a little over, uh, so it's around 162. Um, and that's actually gonna be just repeated for dinner. Um, so you're just gonna double that. Uh, and that's gonna be my macros for my lunch and my dinner. Like I said, it'll be all up on the screen. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be uh, the lunch. Like I said, I won't bother putting the dinner in there because it's gonna be the same. Um, so once it's uh, time for my snacks, as I move more towards the evening, I, like I said, I will be uh, getting a workout in tonight. It's gonna be a, a bicep focused whole workout. Um, so I'm gonna kind of spread my calories out a little bit later tonight so then I'm able to kind of have some calories uh, left for that. Um, but yeah, once I move more into uh, my snacks, um, I will show you that. Um, yeah, so I'll check, in to you. I'll check in with you when it's snack time. All right, so now that lunch and dinner is both in the books, uh, the last meal you would have seen would have been uh, lunch. But like I mentioned, it was the same thing for dinner uh, that I had for lunch, so I didn't bother filming it because it would have just been 
competitive, uh, but I will put the macros on the screen and where I'm at right now. Uh, so now I'm moving into my first snack. I always give myself a little bit of flexibility with my diet to include something that I want to have. And tonight I'm just feeling like cereal. Um, the base of my diet is pretty much set in stone. However, with the increase in calories now, uh, being up to 3,500 calories a day allows me to uh, have a little bit of flexibility to include uh, some type of junk foods in my diet. Um, like I said, I think the big thing is just enjoying it as well. You don't want to be so strict with yourself uh, that you're not enjoying it, uh, especially during a bulk, because once it comes to a contest prep or a cut, uh, you're going to have to dramatically uh, reduce calories and you're going to have to reduce things uh, like this. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's going to be cereal. So I'm actually going to be mixing two different types of cereal. The first one's going to be Crave. Um, this is my first time trying it. it. Was this first box that I bought, and honestly, I really love it. Um, I just like really chocolatey favored, flavored cereals. Um, that's just kind of my go-to. And then another chocolate favorite cereal is the Oreos. Um, so basically, what I do is I mix these two. Um, and like I said before, I really like that chocolate craving. So I'm going to be having chocolate milk. I much prefer chocolate milk as opposed to white milk. Um, so I basically just uh, make it work within my calories and my macros. Um, so like I mentioned before, I do weigh everything up to make sure I'm actively, tr actively tracking it. Um, so yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh up one cup. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna use this. I'm just gonna use this for the chocolate milk. Um, this is a volume measure. But with this, they say that uh, they say that three fourths of a cup. So I'm actually gonna use three fourths of a cup. So it's gonna be 29 grams is what I'm weighing up. I want to start off with that. Hopefully there's 29 grams in here. So there's actually 30 grams. So there's a little bit left. Normally I would use the whole thing, but since I want to mix cereals, I really like it. Uh, I really enjoy mixing cereals. Um, I just find it like gives variety, um, and honestly, I love cereals. They're completely underrated. Um, snack food, junk food for sure. Um, so that's 29 grams right there, and then I'm gonna put uh, 31 grams in one cup. So I'm actually gonna use one cup of this. So I'm gonna weigh out 31 grams of the Oreos. And like I said, like this does change. Like this isn't a staple in my diet whatsoever. Um, like I said, I give myself that flexibility. Uh, in my diet to be able to have junk foods like this every now and then. I think it's just all about balance uh, is what it really comes down to. Just being able to balance um, the foods that you eat. If you're having a good mix, you want basically like 80 to 85 to 90% of your diet to be clean food, especially in the off season. Um, and then the rest of it can kind of just be uh, foods that you enjoy more. And I think that's a more sustainable approach, like I mentioned. Um, so yeah, there's the both cereals mixed. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to weigh up half a cup of chocolate milk. I feel like half a cup's enough. Um, I could use a full cup, but I don't really want all those calories coming from it. Uh, I'd rather the calories coming from the cereal, and this is just to kind of add a little bit. So I will do half a cup. And as you can see, it's still quite a bit. Like that's half a cup right there. And that's still quite a bit of chocolate milk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enjoy this um, and then I'll be having another snack which will be uh, my second snack that I'll be having probably about I'd say about an hour I won't wait two hours because this is just a light uh, meal um, and I am going to be going to the gym uh, at, not after this one but after my next snack um, so I kind of want to get to the gym uh, and, and go through that workout so yeah I'm going to be having this and then probably about a half an hour time I'll check back in with you and I'll be having my next snack Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes since I had that bowl of cereal. Now I'm going to be moving on to more of a higher protein option. And honestly, I look forward to this every single night. This is a huge uh, protein staple for me in my diet. And that's actually Greek yogurt. Um, this is the Costco version of it. Uh, but honestly, it's, it's awesome. Um, 18 grams of protein and only three-fourths of a cup. Um, so what I normally do is tonight I'm running a little bit behind on protein. I kind of want to get around 220 grams of protein, so I'm going to be having a little bit more uh, than I normally would. Normally I would have 350 grams, but tonight I'm actually going to be bumping that up to 400. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how I make this. I consider this almost like a dessert. Um, it's that good. Um, protein, like I said, uh, not protein, but uh, Greek yogurt's the main protein source, and then I do put a little bit of uh, whey, whey protein powder in there with it. So I'm going to walk you through this. Like I said, I'm gonna weigh up 400 grams. So 
401. So that's fine. Like I said, I always put the exact number in, so if it doesn't have to be 401, um, it's not that much of a material difference, but I will put 401 in the tracking app. Um, so there's the free kill group. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these refrigerated jellos. Uh, these are no sugar added. There's only, so I'll put it up so you can see it. Um, there's the chocolate one, and then there's the butterscotch or caramel one, I think it is. Um, these are 50 calories. These are extremely awesome. They're no sugar added. Um, they fit perfectly in. Basically, the only thing in them is carbs, really. Um, so I find that this mixes well in with the Greek yogurt to kind of give it a chocolate taste. Like I said, I really love that ch that chocolate taste, same thing with the cereal. Um, so yeah, I kind of mimic that with the Greek yogurt as well. So the, like I said, you can pick these up at Walmart. Um, they're pretty cheap too. I think they're only two bucks and you get four of them. Sometimes they have deals where you get three for three for five, I think it is. Um, so yeah, they're really, really good. I highly recommend putting them with Greek yogurt. Um, so that's that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half a scoop uh, of protein powder, not even a full scoop because I actually use, I only uh, actually use one scoop of protein powder a day. I actually split this, the scoop between uh, this meal and then the, the last meal of the day, which I'll be showing you um, once I get into it. So that's about half a scoop there. there, so that's fine. So that's the protein powder and then the refrigerated uh, jello. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to I'm gonna be adding a little bit of peanut butter. Once again, I really like that chocolate peanut butter taste. Um, I have it in my oatmeal, uh, the peanut butter, so now I'm going to be using it again for my Greek yogurt. This has been a staple now for I don't even know how many months, um, and I just absolutely love it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing two tablespoons tonight because my fat is a little bit low. Like I said, calories are increased. Um, so I'm going to be doing 30 grams, which is actually two tablespoons. So let's see if I can get 30. 26. a little bit of stuff that I always look up before. I absolutely love peanut butter, <laughs> if you can't tell. So there's the peanut butter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, so what these are, these are just Oreo cookies, uh, but they're dark chocolate. Uh, so they're a little bit, uh, I find it goes better with the chocolate and the peanut butter. Um, so this is a really good flavor. Um, just in general, you can get a bunch of different flavors like up here. Um, I do have the Oreo latte ones. I don't know if you've ever tried those. Uh, those ones are absolutely amazing. They're smaller, um, so the cookies are actually much smaller than a normal cookie. Uh, they're kind of good to snack on if you're kind of craving something sweet because they don't have a lot of calories in them. I think for four cookies, you're only getting 140 calories. So versus one of these cookies, where one of these cookies are 70 calories. Uh, but tonight I'm actually gonna go with the dark chocolate. Kind of goes good with the, uh, the chocolate. I'm going for more of a vanilla or that caramel one. Maybe I will use the, the latte ones. So what I do is I just break them up. Sometimes I take a bag and I just stomp on it. Uh, I'm not going to do that today. There, I pretty much stomped on it there when it dropped. <laughs> but yeah, so I just literally break that up. All the ingredients there and then all I do is just mix that up. I'm going to mix that up over the stick and then I'll uh, show you what it looks like. There's the finished product there. Actually it's not finished yet uh, because what I do is I actually put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. The reason why is I find it sets well and the protein powder kind of hardens up a little bit and makes for a really great uh, thicker consistency. So what I'll do is I'll actually throw that in the fridge. Like I said for 30 minutes and 30, 30 minutes time I'll eat it. Uh, so just to give you an update, I'm actually going to be uh, eating this in 30 minutes and then I'm going to be heading to the gym probably uh, within an hour, I would say. Um, so that's kind of what my plan is. I'm going to be getting a, a bicep uh, focused pull workout in. 
Um, so yeah, I guess what I'll do is I'll just finish eating this and then you guys can, uh, I'll just catch you at the gym.
All right, so I just got home from my workout. Um, it was an awesome bicep focused workout. Uh, now I'm going to get into uh, the next couple snacks that I have. I'm actually gonna be pairing them together. Um, I do have one more snack after this, um, and it's a high protein bedtime snack, so I'll actually get into that later. Uh, but what I'm gonna be having now is I'm actually gonna be, like I mentioned, I increased the calories, so this isn't a staple of my diet. Uh, but with the calories being increased, it's an extra way to get some extra carbs. Um, so I'm actually gonna be going with some pop chips. Um, this is 85 grams, so I think it works out to be just under 400 calories in total um, and anywhere probably from 50 to 60 grams of carbs. Um, so this is a great carb source uh, for now just to kind of get some quick carbs in. But my staple for my carbs is going with Smart Pop. So this is my bag of Smart Pop. Um, this is only 240 calories per bag and the idea behind the Smart Pop is that it's lower in fat. Um, so it's a little bit healthier for you and I think it tastes just fine. Um, it tastes like just pop, like regular popcorn to me. Um, and there's probably about 50 grams of carbs in this bag. Um, so that's about 100. 100 110 grams of carbs uh, in total just to kind of get it in after my workout like I said I will be putting all the macros on the screen and at the end of my final meal uh, when I actually eat that probably in about an hour an hour and a half before I head to bed I'm gonna actually put the running total up so you can see my total macros um, but yeah I'm gonna dive into this and then I'll hit you back when I get into my uh, last bedtime snack all right so now it's time for the final meal of the day um, and this is going to be, like I said, a high protein meal. Um, I always like to try to get a slow digesting protein into me before I go to bed. Um, and that's actually going to be cottage cheese. I know most of you, have maybe seen this on my channel before, but most of you probably don't like cottage cheese. And I was in the same boat, but honestly, when you put it in the blender uh, with what I'm going to show you, um, and then put it in the fridge and then uh, let it sit before you eat it, honestly, it, it turns out really, really good and you can't even taste the cottage cheese. Um, so yeah, this is going to be my final meal. Um, so how I make this is basically I take the blender and I throw it on the scale. So all I do is just put like a little bit of water in it, um, just enough to kind of uh, cover the, uh, I guess like the blades. So that's probably good there. And then I weigh up some frozen fruit. So I just got the, the four berry mix. Um, you can get whatever your personal preference is. This is what I've been going for, and I really like the uh, the mix. Um, the only thing I don't really like is like the big pieces, um, like of peaches and mangoes. I just find they don't blend up well. Um, so I kind of go for more of the smaller fruit. Uh, so what I normally do is I weigh up about 140 grams of frozen fruit. 100, look at that, 140 bang on. And the next thing I'm going to add is, like I said, I divide the uh, proteins, protein powder like I mentioned before. I only use one scoop of protein powder a day. Um, I just kind of like to prioritize whole foods and just whole food options. Um, so yeah, like I said, I, I use half a scoop. I used half a scoop of my Greek yogurt, and now I'm going to use the other half in the cottage cheese. And I think that it makes the uh, makes it taste a little bit better too with the vanilla flavor. So it kind of flavors it. The last thing I want to add is cottage cheese. And what I normally do with this is I weigh up 250 grams, or yeah, 250 grams of cottage cheese, which ends up being one cup. So like I said, I don't really use the measuring cups. I like to weigh everything out with the uh, with the scale. So that's going to be 250 grams. Chuck that on the blender. And then blend it up. That's probably good there. As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty thick uh, consistency. And trust me, you can't even taste the cottage cheese. All I really taste is the fruit and the protein powder. If you want to use milk or like an almond milk, I used, I used to use almond milk in the past. Um, I just got sick of buying the almond milk, it's just kind of expensive. Um, and I didn't really found that it, uh, it added too much to it, honestly. Um, it makes it a little bit better tasting, I guess you could say. Um, but I just decided to go with water, but you can use like a milk or an almond milk. And as you can see, it is a really nice texture. Um, so that is it there. Um, and that's gonna be my final meal. I normally put that in the fridge uh, for about, like I said, 10, 10 to 15 minutes before I eat it. Um, and like I said, I want to pull up the macros on the screen uh, now so you can see them. It's going to be the full day of eating. 
So that's all the total meals that I had today. Um, yeah, so I hope everybody uh, took something from the, all the meals that I eat. And like I said, I'm in the middle of my bulk. Um, so it's 3,500 calories is what I normally aim for, normally try to get. Um, and I just kind of watch my weight and just kind of see how it, how it moves. Like I said, I kind of want to get up to 205. That's kind of my goal. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna eat this in about 10, 15 minutes and then I'll check in with you. That's it for today's video. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I tried to take you through the whole day and kind of give you an idea of what my clean bulk looks like from a day to day, uh, being the full day of eating, along with the, uh, the posing update, uh, kind of basically how I uh, track my calories on a spreadsheet and basically my training. So I'm looking forward to deliver a lot more content like this from this series. Um, and if you haven't checked out the first episode, I highly encourage you to watch that. It was a, uh, a really great push workout that I got in with Mulio Motivation. Uh, so definitely go check that out. I'll throw it up in the cards above. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Like I said, I do have a lot of great exciting content planned in the works that I'm really excited to deliver with you guys, or to you guys. Um, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also turn on the bell notifications. I want to make sure you get notified every time I drop a new video, which happens to be three times a week now. So if you're new to my channel, I'll throw my upload schedule on the screen. Um, so you can see it basically what it is. It's a Sunday I upload what's called something from a clean bulk series and it's more educational based uh, style content and then on Wednesday I actually do a versus series um, where I'm actually comparing popular exercises that determines which one or to determine which one is better for you from a muscle building standpoint so make sure to check out that series as well and Friday it's this series the road to pro series um, so that's basically my upload schedule in a nutshell um, and I really I uh, really hope everybody enjoys all the videos that I do put out and don't forget to like the video I do appreciate all the support uh, and the likes do go a long way and I'll see everybody here next time all right peace out